pray that in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you guys for standing. You can have your seats before you sit down. Say Johnny drama. Dudes always got to have some drama. Girls be having some drama too sometimes though. A lot of times it's the guys though. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for being here. I know it's been a while since we've got together. And so uh, one of the cool things about uh, coming back together through the summertime is we get a chance to really talk a little bit more about what it is that we have coming up and some of the things that we have coming up in just the near future. Uh, rising college freshmen. Could you raise your hand? Rising college freshmen. You graduated. Rising. You're, you'll be in school somewhere sitting in somebody's class in a couple of weeks. Um, hey, so listen, this is what I always say. I have about three more Sundays before you go. And some of y'all are even shorter than that. Just a couple Sundays before you finish. So this very well could be just your final three messages that you will ever hear me preach again. And you've probably heard me. If you've been around here for even a year, you've heard a lot of different messages. And if it's been longer than that for most of you guys, you've heard a lot of messages. And so I have about three more Sundays to talk to you before you are gone in another world, on a campus, in a dorm, somewhere, doing life that way. And uh, for some of you guys, you're ready to get out of here. You are excited. You can't wait to leave. You're sick of your parents. You're ready to go spread your wings and fly. And so we're happy for you for that. And and even for those of you that that's you, there's a little bit of fear and anxiety in there as well because you're going to be small and everybody else is going to be big. And even if you're tall, there's going to be somebody taller. And so uh, it's going to be it's going to be real cool so that you can just hone in on these next three weeks on some of the things I have to share. These are kind of like my final words to you before you go and experience life in a whole nother capacity and in a whole nother area Uh, before the the summer is out, before you guys leave, we're going to pray for you all. But um, but today is we're going to kind of start this this whole concept of what we've been talking about, about the whole church. Who was here for the 25th anniversary? Was anybody here for that? Any any night at all? Any night? Anybody? Yeah. And so it was long. Was, was here, who was here Friday night? Was anyone here Friday night? Yeah, a couple of y'all. Was that Jake long? It was super long. And so uh, I'm not going to be too long today because I just want to kind of help you understand what um, what's happened and what's going to happen in the next the next 25 years, the way that they've been saying is this is the new era of Calvary. And so you play a huge part in that, whether you've been here for like a long time or maybe this is your first or second Sunday. However it is, you play a huge part in what's going to happen. And I kind of want to help today just help you understand a little bit more about what um, what your role in this and how can you help um, the church be what it's supposed to be by you understanding who you're supposed to be. And But I can't do that. Unless I tell you uh, real quick about something that happened to me not too long ago. In fact, it, it, was, it was a long time ago, but anytime you're talking, everybody says not too long ago, but you don't know how long that is. So, uh, so not too long ago, um, does anyone have an older brother or an older sister? Anyone? You are the younger one. Who of you all has a, uh, you are the oldest or the older brother or sister? You are an older brother or sister. Great dynamic, a lot of fights, a lot of fighting. A lot of they do what you say do. You go, who's the tattletale? Were you the tattletale? Raise your hand if you were the tattletale. We hate you guys. With a, with a certain kind of hate and a brotherly love hate type of way in Jesus' name. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that, that I love, because I'm the oldest of six. There's three boys, three girls. We're all a year apart. We always heard it. Y'all the Black Brady Bunch. Uh, even though we're not all the way black, but we're the Black Brady Bunch. Uh, we're, we got told that, do you guys remember the, uh, have you ever seen ducks? Like when they're walking? Like have you ever drove like somewhere? Like on Greenbrier Parkway, they're always out there. And it's like, you just see one, two, and then you see two, two, two. And then you see three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and, then, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to be late now. And so, like, you're, you're walking across. And so that was us. Like, we would roll into places and be like, oh, 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 And we would always walk into a place. Like, and we literally did everything that way. We ran through all of our schools. It was like six of us. So it's like five years of elementary school. Each person, that's like 30 years of, like, an elementary school plus another, like, middle school, also 18 years plus high school, four times, six, 24. So there's a lot of like, we just, a lot of Osbournes around. And uh, one of the great things about being the older brother is I have the privilege and the honor of occasionally uh, being in a place where um, there's this nature, if you're an older brother specifically, older girls have it too, older sisters as well, but you, you automatically know it's okay to inflict pain on the younger ones at times. 
And so that would happen occasionally, and we would get into fights, and it would, like, my younger sisters, like, I was, I was like the babysitter, actually. Like, I got, I got paid to babysit my younger brothers and sisters, and so I, we would not be like, go to your room, and they'd be like, no, I'm, like, I'm telling mom, and like, go to your room, and so they would go to their rooms, and I was, like, flexing my authority, but occasionally, me and my brother, who was right behind me, we would get into a fight, and we get into fights a lot, but when we fought, it was like, y'all know, like, the, like, like, the it was like the ending of just like this epic movie because like walls would get broken and like doors would get like come off the hinge because we would just be fighting everybody all my brothers and sisters as we were fighting they'd be crying like no no and so like it was it was kind of epic like that sometimes and then what was crazy though is being the older sibling you have this natural kind of protector thing that happens for your younger ones it's like it's okay for me to inflict pain on them but if somebody outside of this family does that we have some problems right and so for me it happened a lot of times. And so, have, do you guys remember when you would play fight with your brothers and sisters? And you'd be like, wah, 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 wah. And you, would y'all make the sound effect? You wouldn't really hit them in the face normally, but you would be like, whoosh, wouldn't you do that? And we would go, and then also in like kicking, because wouldn't you want to be like the movie, like, ah. And then so you would go, you go, ah, and then go, whoosh, whoosh, right? Y'all did that sound effects? Occasionally, I would get an opportunity to inflict real life sound effects on people that tried to inflict sound effects on my brothers and sisters. Because every now and then there would be somebody that would try to punk or bully or mess with or fight or hit one of my brothers or sisters, one of my younger brothers or sisters. And so those were just, I couldn't, you couldn't, I wasn't the dude that just got into fights. Like, I, that wasn't me. But if you messed with my family or messed with me or talked about my mom, like, it was going down. Um, you can talk about my dad, but if you talk about my mom, like, it was going down. And I'm just kidding. But, but that's how it is sometimes. And so, like, I remember, I remember, like, there was this one time, and I had to be maybe in the seventh grade. And so my, my younger sisters, who were probably in, like, third or fourth grade, right? So they are, I go to school after them. They go to school before me. So they're running to the bus stop, you know. And, have you, you know, the bus stop, all sorts of devious, scandalous, demonic things happen at the bus stop, right? And so, like, especially elementary school bus stop. And so the kids are like, and so there was this kid, this little punk kid that um, that he was. He went to he went he went to the bus stop, and he was like a skater kid that wore like he had like holes on his jeans, and it wasn't cool then to wear holes in your jeans. And so like he was like he was like you know skate, and he's he had like dyed hair, this little kid. And one day my sisters came back to home the next like that same day, the afternoon, like ah, ah, and this is after this all. Ah, ah. So I'm like. What happened? Why are you crying? And I remember my sister Rachel and uh, or Elizabeth and Abby told me. They said, "Uh, uh yeah. and you know when you try to talk about stuff when you've been hurt and it just gets worse as it tries to come out." It's like, hey, 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 hey. and I'm getting upset. Have you ever been trying to work something out and you're like, "What's going on?" Because you're like, "What's?" They said, and 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 hit me. And, okay, now remember, the older brother, protector, I didn't hear any of the and the drool, I didn't see none of that. I just heard, hit me. So this little punk skater kid, like, evidently hit my sisters. And he's a boy, too. So, you know, and, you know, boys, you know, we don't know nothing. And, you know, they, he probably liked them, you know what I'm saying? But that's how we communicate. I don't know what was going on, but I, I thought it was a devious demonic situation. And so again, y'all know we do sound effects, right? So this is my opportunity to put a sound effect in play with this kid. And so next day school comes up. It's like or next day my sisters, they go, I, I'm so hot. I'm so hot. I can't even like sleep that night. I'm like, yo, when I see this kid, like when I see this. And when I was in seventh grade, this kid's probably like third or fourth grade. I don't care though. He hit my sister. And so like, so I run out. The, I run out. I like, I run out of the house. They're still walking. I run to the bus stop before they get there and literally this kid he just unfortunately for him he happened to be super short too and so like so I literally I just run after this I run out to the bus stop hit the corner whew, whew. kids is thinking everything's cool thinking everything's cool he sees me running he tries to take off I take his book bag throw him up into the fence 
buy his book bag. And I went, and, and, and then like, and he's, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm like 13, and he's probably like, I don't know, whatever th- third, fourth grader is. And, 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 and like, I don't, I don't, I don't, because you know, you're not, you shouldn't punch a kid like that. But, but I, I, I brushed him in a good way. Like, I, you know, have you ever held somebody like good? Like, yo. So I, I yelled, but then I gave him a little bit of the forearm. And I was like, if you ever, if you ever touch, if you ever. The kid got so scared after the whole ordeal. My sisters were just there like, yeah, I told you, I told you, I told you. <laughs> and so this kid got so scared, never came back to the bus stop ever again. Ever. Like, to this day, never been back. That was one instance. I remember another time my, my brother, who's like two years younger than me, like this, I was probably like in 10th grade. So it was in high school, a little bit state. He's in eighth grade. He comes home. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, you're in eighth grade. Like, you don't cry like that in eighth. Especially this guy's like, <laughs> he's, like, he's like, he's like, he's like, David. And I'm like, I'm like, what's wrong? You know when you get upset because you're trying to figure it out? Like, what's wrong? <laughs> He just goes like this. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm getting upset. He's like, he threw, he threw rocks at me. <laughs> so what happened was we were on our route that we walk home. See, there's a lot of, cra- has anyone had some crazy stuff on their way to school or on their way from school? Just the craziest, you see a kid smoking like crack or like, you know, what I'm, I'm ser- a dead, a dead cat. You know what I'm saying? Like, just crazy. Somebody's fighting. It's just all sorts of crazy stuff happens on the way to and from school. And so, like, I, re- so I remember, like, so he was walking to school, and there were some guys who were older than he was. They were about my age, and some guys that were older than him, about three years older than him. So they had to be about a year or two older than me. And, you know, it was, a, we, it was a, I don't know if it was a racial, racial situation, but it was definitely something going on other than just picking on a kid. And so I recognized what it was. And again, the older brother, protector jumps up out of me. So I'm like, oh, so we didn't have cell phones back then. So I like, beep, 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 beep. It's called a house phone. I beep, 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 beep. I come like, yo, I said, go get everybody. And so like everybody from the neighborhood, we roll out on some like, we looking like we're like the, like the dance crew from like whatever Chris Brown video. And like, we're like, yo, we about to get these dudes. And so we go outside to like, to, to the area where it's at. And there's like a road in between us. And the kid has some of his guys as well. And it's about to get, like, it's about to go down right now. So we're like tell the kid like yo if you ever bleep 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 everybody and all that's happening and that's happened a lot as an older brother for me it's just part of the job it's part of this is the way it goes down I love it and so one of the one again in my opportunity to create sound effects and uh, one of the things that I love about that though is is it's not just me that that's, that's that way because even in my strongest ability have, if you've ever been the kids that got picked on, or you, maybe you've been the one that's got bullied, or maybe online some people have always talked reckless to you and has hurt your feelings in a way that is past what you're used to being normal, just kind of play stuff. And they'd be like, ah, we're just playing. It's like, no, I'm not. That hurts me. What I love about Jesus is even more than so for me as an older brother who's trying to be a protector. There are situations and sometimes what I've experienced in my own life where he is beyond what I can able provide. And so what I love about him is that when there's moments that I'm in a situation that is bigger than my circumstance, is bigger than my own needs, that's bigger than what I'm able to do with it, God steps in and says, hey, I'm here to protect you. I'm here to, to look after you. I'm here to watch over you. And, and see, the thing for me, being the firstborn, or some of you guys, if you're the firstborn, you understand this. You always got to do things first. You always got to figure out how to do school. You always got to figure out how to do the sports thing. You always got to figure out how you do relationships. You got to be the first one. And then the beauty is that your younger brothers and sisters, they see an example and they can be like, oh, okay, well, this is how you do it. Oh, yeah, let me show you. You make a left right there. This is how you drive where I got you. That's just part of being an older sibling. What I love about Jesus is that he calls us children of God. He says, hey, 
my children, uh, you don't have to worry because greater is he that is in you than he that's in this world. And so there's two things I want to tell you today in your understanding of, of maybe you've had a destructive relationship like Donna or maybe you've had a relationship that's not a romantic one, but it's just gone sour and, and it's gone to down in the pits and, and you're trying to figure out why or maybe you've experienced relationship where you wanted one thing and there was something else that they were after and it was never what you had planned. The beauty of Jesus is that greater is he that's inside of you than he that's in this world around you. And so there's two things I want to tell you and then we're going to get out of here. The first one is this, is that you can overcome because he overcame. I want to say that again, write it down, put it in your phone, send it out. You can overcome because he overcame. Now, David, you're saying, why does that even matter? It's just, well, this is the thing. Our, the, 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 the vision of our church is building an overcoming church out of broken lives through the power of Jesus Christ. I want you to say it all together. Say building. Say building. An overcoming church. That was weak. An overcoming church. Out of broken lives. Through the power of Jesus Christ. That was weak. Through the power of Jesus Christ. That's right. We are building an overcoming church out of broken lives through the power of Jesus Christ. And the beautiful thing about that is you were either one or two people in that sentence. You were either the one who is broken, messed up, life is crazy, you don't understand stuff, or you're the one that's overcame that. And what we as a church have been trying to do for the past 25 years, and that's when we have those moments like what we had last week or today during communion. We're in there like crying and we're singing these songs and people are emotional. It's not just because they're like emotional. It's because they realize that, that, that because Jesus overcame the cross and because he overcame the sin that you don't have to deal with because he was faced with the very thing that you're walking into right now. And the very thing that has got you so messed up because you thought that the world would end after this circumstance. There was no way out. There is no way out that you thought that this is the end. But if that wasn't the case, if that was true, then Jesus wouldn't be necessary. But Jesus knew you in 2015, in the month of July, exactly you knowing he would be right here with you because he overcame the cross and the sin and the failure and the mistakes and everything wrong so that you could overcome the situation that you're facing at this very moment. Why did she, why did she break up with you, bro? I don't know. Why did, she, why did, she, why did he decide to turn another way. I couldn't tell you why. I don't know why they left. I don't know why he decided after all these years to step out of his responsibility and, and leave your family. I'm not sure why things always go against you. It's, it feels like all the professors and all the teachers are always looking towards you as like the bad kid, or maybe you're trying to figure out like, man, is this all there is to life? Like, is this it? The great thing about you is that you are able to overcome that because he overcame it already. And for you to understand that you play a part in this whole next era of what God has to do, you have to understand that he has overcome, and now you can as well. The second thing I want to tell you, firstly, remember that you can overcome because he overcame. And the second last thing that we're going to say and we're going to head out is this very simple idea. And this is simple, but it, it, it can change everything for you if you let it. This idea that Jesus said, yes, you're mine. He said, yes, he, he, John wanted to make it clear that, hey, you, you're over, you can overcome. But then he said something else, and this is what I want to tell you. And this is, this is something I want you to kind of get, and, and, and I'll explain it more. But he says this. He says, not only can you overcome because he overcame, but you can be better because he is bigger. You can be better because he is bigger. You how you are right now, have the potential, have the ability, have the residing promise inside of you to be better because Jesus is bigger. That makes all the difference in the world. Because imagine this. Imagine, let me tell you my story. See, imagine this. I remember I, got, I was one of those kids, same time, where I was the oldest, so you always had to deal with the bullies. And you always had to deal with the people first before your brothers and sisters would. And I remember I was getting bullied this one year, and it was all this. I was afraid to go to class. Like, people were like, they will cut you. Like, back then, they were like 
putting razor blades in their mouths and cutting people. And so, like, I remember my dad one time, he was all over this, like, crazy girl. It was nuts. It was, I can't believe it happened. And so I remember, I was like, it got to that. Have you ever tried to keep something from your mom and dad for a very long time? And then, like, it comes out just by, like, accident. And so for me, it was like, my dad was like, hey, son, how you doing? And it was like, I don't know, I was like, <laughs> and it just goes, damn, you don't understand? This razor blades, you cut me, this stupid girl. And my dad, he knew something that I didn't know. He knew that I can overcome this because Jesus overcame this. And he said that, and I was like, Dad, no, no you don't understand. Jesus, what we, no, no, razor blades, Dad, razor blades. And he said something. He said, son, it's going to be okay. And I was like, no, 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 no. No, there's, there's five of them, the whole, the whole, all the eighth graders. They all want to fight me, everybody. And he's like, no, it's going to be okay. But see, the promise that I had was that there was a father that was speaking over my life that said, you're going to get past this, that you can be better than this because the God you serve is bigger. And what I want to tell you students is, is you're not better because you're awesome. You're not better because of your parents or, or, or the, the clothes that you have, the shoes that you wear, or the house that you live in, or anything how, like how many followers you have or how many people are following you or, or whatever your issue is. None of that makes any difference in you being better. You're better because Jesus is bigger than what you need. And you're not better than other people. You're better than the person that you see in the mirror right now. You are better than the reality that you have right now. That's the reason why you can't stop. This is the reason why when it's hard to worship Jesus, when it's really, like, boring and drab and like, oh, I don't want to be here. Like, what is, that's, that's why it's purposeful for you to press past that and still see that God is with you. And so for you to understand that you can overcome all of these things where you're at right now, it's because you can be better because Jesus is bigger. And so maybe you are for those of you that are the broken lives. I was the broken life. It wasn't until I was 13 that I understood that there was more for me than what I experienced at that moment. And I remember the time that there was something more. I remember when I was 17 and Jesus wrecked my life and he said, I'm, I'm not hearing anything from this region. What are you going to do about it? I said, Jesus, I'll give you everything for you right now. There's potential calling, purpose, and destiny resting inside of you. You can be better because he is bigger and if you if he wasn't bigger unfortunately you couldn't be better but I'm thankful that Jesus decided to take the pain and the shame and the the frustration and the anguish and the angst and he took all of the suffering that will be necessary on the cross of Jesus Christ and he said I'll carry it and I'll go up to this place I'll die a death that I was never supposed to die I'll suffer because I was never supposed to do this so that you could be better so that you could overcome overcome and I love the idea that the only thing I have to do is just rest in that promise and stop trying to fight for myself my question for you is are you willing to hang out with the Johnny dramas and all the craziness are you willing to rise up and be an overcomer see when we wear the shirts it's not just a tagline it's not just a slogan for us it's a lifestyle for us it's a reality and maybe for some of your parents it's been that way as well but I think for you in this next era, it's your turn to overcome and to be better because he's bigger and he already overcame. Why don't you guys stand up for a moment?